Symbolic imagery carries the transformative power of a million words without a single syllable. The potential energy that arises from curiosity cannot be measured or weighed, for it is free from the confines of time and space, as thought forms carry through the hearts and minds of many. Karma is opportunity. My name is Jamie, and this is the story of how I utilize art and open-eye public meditation to evoke self-inquiry and invoke the divinity within the soul of humanity. Once upon a time in the Milky Way galaxy lived a beautiful planet named Earth, who came to be known as the Great Mother. She was the harmonic voice of the universe, which meant one song. She was home to the most magnificent mountains that fed wild rivers, who ran to her hues of blue oceans as vast as the cosmos itself. Canopies of green trees rooted in her rich soil swayed to the rhythm of her gentle breeze. The Great Mother provided the balance of life for many species within her loving moonlit gaze. Wise old elephants roamed the plains. Witty dolphins swam in her seas and birds glided through the skies with the greatest of ease. One day a star landed on the Great Mother and planted a peculiar seed that grew into the human species. These fascinating beings were unlike any creatures before, with curious minds and a design that allowed them to manifest brilliant technology over the span of time. The humans flourished and expanded for thousands upon thousands of years, building structures that reached towards the stars and machines that flew at lightning speeds. The humans grew smarter and stronger in many ways, but also grew in their limited view of who they were beyond what their senses or stories told them was true. Their ways of being became curiouser and curiouser to other species and galaxies far away. These silent watchers were the big brothers and sisters of the same light. They observed over time in dismay as the humans' destructive forces gave way to the darkest of horrors and terrors untold. They saw the system of greed that preyed on the senses of the human's identity, exhausted the finite resources of its host while exploiting the labors of its kind. It was simple to understand the trifecta of powerful global elites who played in the corporations, banks, and governments that directed the policies and behaviors which determined the human's trajectory, not to mention the countless other species which were vanishing right before their very sleepy eyes. The greatest injustice the human species had ever seen, its own demise was lurking like a gray cloud in a darkened sky. The Great Mother knew the only way out of this mess was through. She called out to her star children to remember their oneness in their waking slumber. She knew her humans were capable of many wondrous things and thought, if only they could see their infinite selves. Oh, how lovely this world could be. Like any adoring mother would, she used her tough love to have her one voice be heard for the sake of their own good. Her soul stirred and shook from deep underground. Her winds blew and fires grew. Her mountains cracked open in bursts of red and orange. Her cries filled the skies in rolling thunder and tears of blue filled the lakes until they flowed to the oceans and back again. Then suddenly the great pandemic swept across the land taking thousands of lives and dividing countless more who took to the streets waving flags and fingers in all directions until alas, 
at their own reflections. Time seemed to stand still for many humans as they watched the changes unfold. Transparency slowly revealed the truths that so many didn't dare see before. The people watched in disbelief as their leader's incompetency and their own complacency was in clear sight. The desperation of the greed began printing money for themselves to salvage their fortunes and then they ran for the hills, realizing they had been bamboozled into playing a most cruel game called annihilation. The masses became humble in their wake. They had allowed the systems to engulf their very way of being. They were the machine. Sorrow and stillness settled amongst the ashes of their comfort as silence brought them to tears. The hearts of the humans began to grow from within their open minds. From this place of peace, they remembered the gift of their great mother within the universe their one song. Together, their single voice would be heard from all corners of the world. They knew the difficult part of change was taking responsibility, and that would be the first verse of many songs to come that would raise their vibration in the rapture of being in absolute harmony. They realized how to use meditation to evoke self-inquiry and create a new reality based on intuitive mind thinking. The elites eventually came down from their fearful mountains of illusion and joined forces with the many who were well underway in making the world anew. Little towns sprang from their collective visions of gratitude, and together they built empires of plenty with no more slave labor or factory farming, no more fracking and burning, no more poisonous chemicals, pills, or foods for harming. They realized methods of production and consumption that gave back to their great mother who smiled upon them. The humans used innovation and technology to embed their sacred values, which they held in their hearts all along. It only needed to become free in one cosmic song. Ultimately, a genuine leader is not a such a for consensus, but he's a molder of consensus. And on some positions, Howard is asked the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but he must do it because conscience tells him it is right. And that is where I stand today, and that is where I hope you will continue to stand so that we can speed up the day when justice will roll down like waters all over the world and righteousness like a mighty stream. And we will speed up the day when men will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And nations will not rise up against nations, neither will they study war anymore. And I close by saying, as we sing it in the old Negro spiritual, I ain't gonna study war no more. <laughs> When we realize that we live in a web of life where all is one, we treat every strand in that web with love and care. And when we think we are separate from the earth, we think we are apart from the earth, we stupidly try and dominate over her. We try and treat her as an object and all her beings, which are sentient beings, as if they were dead matter. And we manipulate and torture and think there is no consequence. We allow violence to become the basis of our relationship with the earth because we think in that we are being superior.
by being dominant, but we were not meant to be conquerors and dominators. We are meant to be part of the web of life. It's very important in our everyday life to remember all is one. You can't assume that other people are going to fix these issues and you can just kind of chill and the world will work out. Um, that also doesn't mean that you should freak out and go into ex existential angst on hyperdrive without knowing what to do. But to progressively lean in more and say, okay, there's a path where we can make it, but it's not a given at all that we do yet. Rather than ask whether we do or not, how do I help determine that we do? How can I engage? And that will require learning a bunch of shit that you don't currently know and that maybe nobody has synthesized well yet. And that's what being an imaginal cell in the transition from caterpillar to butterfly really means, is taking some empowered responsibility for being someone who's recognizing that you can't just run the instruction manual that was given historically and the new instruction manual doesn't exist yet. And it's actually the time of people in that liminal phase is to work on developing what, is, what are the new structures. Um, quantum physics has basically revealed the fundamental unity of life. Surface diversity, but deeper levels at the molecular, atomic, subatomic, subnuclear, electroweak unified, etc., culminates in the discovery of what's called the unified field, fulfilling Einstein's dream of revealing the fundamental unity at the basis of the diversity of the universe. Now, what does that have to do with us? So you're saying that the idea that things are separate and distinct from each other on a material level is illusory. Is Sensory that what you're saying? illusion. That's correct. It's a sensory illusion. That's correct. correct. But you can go beyond the senses. And that's what meditation traditionally is. Properly understood, it is a technique to pull the awareness from the outwardly directed senses powerfully within to experience deeper levels of mind, simpler, quieter, more unified levels of the thinking process, and then slipping beyond thought, that's where the transcendental comes in, beyond thought altogether to experience this universal unity at the basis of mind and matter. So we can access neurologically in our own minds the unifying field of creativity from which all energy and matter has come, perhaps even the cosmos and universe itself, is that what you're saying? That's right, and it's not just philosophically so. interesting, but it's really practically important because Why? that meditative state is considered to be a fourth state of consciousness, that means not waking, dreaming, sleeping, in which the entire brain, as we've heard, is engaged. And that orderly, coherent style of functioning of the brain develops the full potential of human life. So truth be told, meditation, transcendental meditation, comes from the ancient wisdom of yoga, and it's designed, it's engineered to develop the full potential of the brain. And as a side benefit, stress, stress-related illness melts away. John, do you reckon if through meditation we can achieve access to a fuller state of consciousness, it may help us to bring about a global revolution where we found a society based on spiritual principles rather than material and economic ones? It's the only way, because... Yes, I thought there'd be a revolution tonight. I'm right in the mood. <laughs>